Do you want to land your first job as a C-sharp developer? Well, C-sharp is a powerful, mature, and versatile language, and it's used from everything from game and mobile development to enterprise software. But a lot of people, they just want to get that first job. So what I'm going to do today is give you the shortest path to go from zero to employable in C-sharp. I'm Eric Wise from Scale Foundry, and over the last decade, my courses have helped thousands of beginners just like you go from zero to employable. So let's get started. Now, starting your coding journey in the console or terminal is key. Why? Because it lets you just focus on learning C-sharp code, unlike front-end pathways where you have to learn JavaScript, HTML, and CSS all at the same time. So we're going to start with basics in our learning roadmap and all of your applications should be built in the terminal. Now the starting point for C-sharp or really any language is syntax. You need to learn to speak the basic language and that's variables, loops, conditions, and things like that. Now your focus here is twofold, not only mastering that basic syntax, but also starting to think like a programmer. And if you're in a course that's guided like something on Skill Foundry, this should take you about 60 hours of practice. Now, once you've got these basics down, it's time to step into the world of object-oriented programming. And this means things like class design, inheritance, polymorphism. You're going to add in some unit testing and code organization, things like that. And this is the hardest part of your programming journey learning to think in objects is not easy. It's going to take you another 60 to 120 hours in a guided course or even longer if you're doing it on your own. And I think it bears repeating that object-oriented programming concepts are the biggest hurdle for beginners and it's the most likely spot where people give up. Now, I always like to tie it back to learning to ride a bike. If you think back to learning to ride a bike. You spent a lot of time wobbling, falling over, just really panicking and trying to feel the balance of the bike. And then at some point, it just clicks. And all of a sudden, the balance just becomes effortless. And you never forget how to ride a bike. You just get that feel and suddenly, your perception is changed forever. The same thing happens when learning object-oriented programming you are going to have to bang your head against these concepts for a while. And everybody learns at different rates, just like learning to ride a bike. But there's a point where you just see objects and you understand objects. And once that light bulb comes on, it never goes off. But you have to have the grit and the tenacity to push through the struggles until that moment happens. Next up, we tackle data. Now, the majority of jobs that you're going to land are going to involve data manipulation of some kind. So you're going to need to work with files and databases and web APIs. And in C-sharp, that also means learning how to work with collections and link and entity framework and also learning SQL. Now, these skills are often transferable to other languages. So learning how to manipulate data as a general principle is a really good thing for your career. And again, in a guided program, this is gonna take you about 60 to 80 hours of effort. Now, the final block in the foundation is learning to create your own web APIs with ASP.NET Core. And this is less complicated than you might think it is because ASP.NET Core is just a collection of specialized objects and it uses dependency injection to modify the framework. So if you've already built the foundation that we've laid out before you, it's just expanding that knowledge to use some specialized objects. But even so, this is going to take about 80 to 100 hours to learn to do properly. Getting to this point is a key milestone for you because at this point, you're ready to interview for entry-level back-end developer positions. And if we add up all the hours, you're looking at somewhere between seven to 10 weeks full-time, 10 to 15 weeks part-time, and up to 40 weeks if you're only doing like 10 hours a week. And now that you've built that solid foundation, 
you're ready to make some choices. If you want to continue your journey into full stack web development, you can stay in ASP.NET Core and you can learn things like Razor or Blazor. Or you might want to jump over and start learning JavaScript and add things like React to your repertoire. Or if you find you prefer desktop applications, you can learn things like Windows Forms or WPF or .NET MAUI. Or if you want to go into game development, it's time to learn Unity. You may also decide that you love backend so much that you'd like to double down on it. In this case, you should start learning cloud and get some certifications in things like Azure and AWS. But regardless of which career path you end up taking, the foundation we set up at the beginning of this video is the minimum requirement to get into those things effectively and land that first job. And this might seem like a long journey, but trust me, there are no shortcuts to becoming a competent, professional C-sharp developer. And we're talking about a career path that has stability, good wages. These things are worth grinding for. So if you slow down and focus on these foundations, you are going to be on track to set yourself up for success. And if you'd like to get started with C-sharp, we've got some great courses over at Skill Foundry that can help you start walking this path. Link in the description below. Happy coding.